Uh, just a box lid, please. <laughs> okay. He's always. Calm down. <laughs> Welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. Exactly. We are back again today with another pumped up Kickstarter. We are here today to do a preview of Children of Morta, the board game. And this, woo, is just a cover. That's why it's so light. This is from, thank you, Jeff. This is from Rumi's Games who very kindly sponsored this video. So shout out to them. Now as per usual with our preview videos, we are going to do a little overview and then we're gonna jump into a discussion to help you figure out whether or not this game is for you. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. We're here, help me help you. Help me. Help me. Help you. Help you. Help me. Help me help, help you. you. What's that from, Jeff? I don't remember. Jerry McGuire. Children of a family that slays together, stays together. Children of Morta, the board game, is a cooperative adventure game with a unique shared bag building mechanism, permanent character development, and emphasis on family growth, simultaneous turns, and interconnected cooperation. In this game, you take on the role of a member of the Bergson family as they try to stop the spreading corruption of evil in their beloved land of Rhea. Defeat monsters and bosses to unlock upgrades for your hero, making them stronger and more prepared for what comes next. So before we jump into anything, just know that this game is a prototype, okay? Just FYI, subject to change. So, Children of Morta is based off of a video game. I have not played it, so I, I have, have no context for that. No context. But Apparently it's very uh, well received and famous. <laughs> Apparently. I just have never played it. But if you're thinking, Children of Morta, isn't that a video game? It is. It is. So if that was a question you had in your this head, this isn't. Problem solved. This is a board game. It even says the board game. Yep. So basically, this game has kind of two modes that you can play. You can do a bit of like a campaign story mode, co-op, co -op, or you can do a family mode where it's just like a one-off, kind of more of like a boss battle. They call it a one-shot. They call it. A, they call it a one-shot. The one-shot wonder. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what they call it. Family mode. But uh, kind of the main bit of it is that story mode. Correct. So essentially what it is, is you are playing, it is co-op, you are playing as a family. And that family, there's stuff going on in the world around them. And they're yeah, like, what the heck? we can't spoil stuff. They're so. spoilers. So we're going to just very be generally vague. be vague. Uh, there's stuff going around and grandma's like, something weird happening around grandma here. Grandma does think something weird happened. She's like, something's going She's on. She's not sure, but she's like, Something's weird. And she Something sends the kids to go check it out. Yes. Okay? So to start the game, you have four different characters that you can choose from. The game does play from one to four players. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've played it at two players. So when we played it, Jeff played as Kevin, and I played as Linda. Because I had to be able to say, one of my favorite Linda, things, listen. One of my favorite things is the uh, names are just normal Every Lucy, day. Linda, Kevin, and John. Every just everyday names. And maybe you can unlock others later. It's like when say? someone plays Legend of Zelda and they don't use Link as the name; they just put like Jeff. <laughs> yeah, 
Hey, listen. Anyways, so you are playing as a family and basically you are going to be setting up different scenarios. Now, once again, this is a prototype, so the book will be thicker than this, but you are gonna be playing out into a little book, okay? So this is the story mode. So what you're gonna do is you're going to open it up. And guess what? There's chapter one. Now I am just gonna show you the kind of map for chapter one, because this isn't really a spoiler. So you are going to be following the setup rules on this side and you are going to be filling out the map with different encounter tokens. You are going to have a family mover token because you move mm -hmm. together. And then one member of the family is going to be the leader. So depending on the scenario, it's going to tell you who that should be. Yep. Uh, if there's a certain character that's not in the game that it says it should be, it will go to like the oldest, yep. that kind of thing, okay? And it, it just designates who's taking on the worst Exactly, stuff. the encounter. So basically each chapter is going to give you an objective. So in chapter one, your objective is to reach this spot. Okay, and we're starting over the here. The shrine. Exactly. So there are, uh, there's a series of phases, but basically you're going to be moving and then there's an encounter phase and there's going to be encounter tokens on different spots of the board. And as Jeff just mentioned, the leader of the family is going to get the harshest of the two. So you'll flip the encounter tokens and they'll have a number. One might be a six and one might be a three mm -hmm. and they're going to have designated symbols. Now those symbols could be you gain some resources. Oftentimes you gain some monsters who Bad are coming guys. to attack you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you are going to be kind of continuing doing that and doing encounters. So after the encounter phase, the heroes are going to get their time to shine. A lot of this is actually done simultaneously. Yes. So it lowers downtime that you often might have. Mm -hmm. There is one shared kind of resource within the family and that's rage. Yes. Okay, so that's kind of the only piece. You're like, oh. Exactly. That's the only piece that you want to be like, hey, hey brother. I'm using, some rage. I'm using some rage because they might need to use it too. Yeah. Anyways, the heroes, I have player aids. I love this. So you're going to have a player board and the heroes are each going to have different actions that they can do. And you're going to be designating different tokens. Let's move the box cover for a minute. Okay. You're going to be pulling different tokens out of the bag. You're going to be pulling five out and those tokens all are different colors. There's red, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And then you're going to assign them to different actions that you have on the board. However, some of them you have to spend focus. So you're also doing a bit of management of a few tracks. You have health, you have evade, and you have focus. And you need to focus. Uh, and then you're going to be resolving those actions. So the actions have different colors on them that you're going to be um, resolving. So if it's white, it's just a straight up either a hit or whatever, gain a focus, do something. Mm -hmm. But if it's a color, then you are going to roll the corresponding color die. And there are three colors. There's blue, there's brown, and there's pink, and they kind of get progressively better as you go along because one thing that you can do once you do, it's called a run, you do it kind of complete a chapter, you can upgrade your characters. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be gaining coins and doing stuff to upgrade your characters to have stronger abilities. It's very uh, thematic to how video games work. Like where you yes. say you're going on a run, that's a very video game thing where you're running through a scenario mm -hmm. and maybe you don't succeed, but you get a little bit stronger and that happens in this game. You might yes. run through, you might not succeed, you, you go die. back to town, you boost up, you go again. Mm -hmm. Kind of roguelike. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I will mention, yeah, purple are stronger than brown, brown are stronger than blue. Yes, exactly. So that's what you're doing. And you're going to be resolving the actions. A lot of the actions are going to have to do with fighting those monsters mm -hmm. that you're putting out in front of you. You've got range monsters, you've got melee monsters. You're also going to have like items and talents that you're building out. You're building out your character yeah. essentially. Okay. So you guys are going to be doing that. And then the monsters are going to get a turn. Okay. The bad guys are fighting back and they are also going to be rolling those die. That's where like the evade comes in and you can kind of protect yourself and do all these things. One thing I will mention just quickly while I'm on the player board is uh, these are going to be dual layer they when are, yeah. they are completed. So this is a prototype, like I mentioned, so they're not currently, but they will be. So if that's something that is important to you, just know that it will yeah, be. Yeah, so you'll be gaining experience on your experience die yeah. and then you can spend that to boost your character up, mm -hmm. get new stuff. Um, Precisely. And it's all done in a very compact package. Yep. Very compact. You saw the map. 
Mm -hmm. And I do also want to mention these characters aren't, it's not just for looks. They do have like asymmetrical abilities and stuff like that. Like Linda, as an example, uh, she is more of a ranged character. Whereas Kevin, who Jeff was playing, is more melee because he's got daggers. It's like a rogue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like sneak up and <laughs> yes. So there's a few ways that the kind of chapter or the quest can end. Uh, if one family member loses all health, you lose. Mm -hmm. Or if your board becomes overrun with monsters, monsters yeah. you lose. So you can hold up to six monsters mm -hmm. on your board um, and they show no mercy. They so don't. you want to try and defeat those monsters like as an example like one thing that could they move so they like they can go from character to they character they can go from character yeah. to character so like let's say in the last game we played Jeff had a monster that had a melee attack so it hit him and then it moved over to me and then it hit me yep. it's so rude yep. so anyways you can die and like Jeff mentioned if you die that's fine it's a very fail forward environment yes you just go back you get to do your upgrades you go back and you do it again but you mm -hmm. don't get to move on unless you've been successful correct okay and then there are going to be like stronger and stronger monsters there are basic monsters and there are advanced monsters that can come out mm -hmm. so it's really it's going to kind of like it's going to ramp as the game goes along but don't worry because guess who else is ramping you. you are. You are ramping. You're ramping. Oh, and another really interesting thing is you do not have to play as the same character every single time. Mm -hmm. They're interchangeable. So you might be like, I'm going to play Linda this time, and next time you might want to play Lucy. You could do that. The chapters are also going to have like different story cards. You can also, that bag that you're pulling from with the tokens that you're going to be using for actions, if you go back to like the little inn or the cottage you can upgrade those tokens mm -hmm. so it might be like you pull one and it not only lets you do your action but it might let you do something else mm -hmm. maybe gain a rage or something like that rage rage raid raid anywho there's a bunch of like tokens and stuff to help you keep track of everything but prototype everything is subject to change but in a nutshell that is the children of Morta. Mm -hmm. It is not an overly like complex game. Um, it it kind of gets you going right away. Yeah. Right. It's not like super rules heavy, and everything is laid out the iconography very well, so that you're able to like really just dive into it. Yeah, it's a campaign experience that is easily accessible and does not take up a entire room to set up and play no or an entire day yes so depending on the chapter now like our prototype copy we only have access to the first two chapters mm -hmm. but it is potentially there is potential that some of the later chapters might be a bit uh longer. it says 45 minutes so yeah bada bing bada bing bada boom. and in case you were curious yes there are reference cards each player gets their own reference card and there is also i'm making a mess it's in Typical. here somewhere. There's also a reference card for the entire like round. Mm -hmm. So you've got everything in front of you that you need. Yep. Jeffrey, who is this game for? First and foremost, if you're a fan of the video game IP, probably something you want to check out. If you are interested in campaign games, but maybe the size and scope of normal campaign games are difficult for you to digest mm -hmm. uh, this might be a little bit more of an accessible option for you if you have limited table space or limited time uh, abilities that sort of thing mm -hmm. uh, this is a very compact version of bigger more grandiose campaign-esque games yes and if you're into co-op games mm -hmm. uh, because you know you can go two ways with a campaign game it could be like every man for himself yep. or every person for themselves or hey we're a big happy family yep. let's work together this is the big happy family kind okay uh, and it is not without its challenges because you are trying to overcome monsters so the actions within it are simple mm -hmm. but you know is it easy to win mm -hmm. i mean yeah you might have like five monsters that are swinging right at your face. Mm -hmm. So maybe not so. Um, now who it might not be for if you are looking for like that big, super immersive yeah. like campaign game. You know, you can immerse yourself into the story because it does give you story along with it. But it's just not going to be as like heavy and involved as a game like maybe 
Frost Haven or Gloom mm-hmm. Haven or something like that. And there's, um, I don't know about the final copy, but there's no miniatures or anything like that. Like I said, everybody, we yeah. are family. Don't don't know if there's going to be minis or not. If you really don't like luck, there is some dice rolling. There is mitigation. Yes. Uh, so keep that in mind. But there, duck, duck, duck rolling. There's ducks? Duck rolling is a mechanism in this game. Yes, there is mitigation. Everybody has three tokens Re- on their board, refresh tokens. Kevin or- can like re-roll his dice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, lots of mitigation as well. So if any of that sounds like something that is piquing your interest, the Kickstarter is going to go live on May 7th. We are going to have all of the information for you in the description below. As per usual, make sure to watch content, read content, check out the Kickstarter page. Make sure that this is a good fit for you because informed buyers make happy buyers. Correct. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Our slogan changes every, every time. time. That is everything that we have for you today. Now, if you're interested in buying board games, but this one is Kickstarter, let's remember. But other board games, you should first start by checking that friendly local gaming store of yours. And for us, that is... The Boardroom Game Cafe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye! Later it is. Can you give me the box? I like to have props. It's my new favorite thing. Linda, Linda, listen. Can we... And by duck, I mean dice. Can we create a game? That's duck rolling. About rolling ducks. Sure. Perfect. You'll love to see it. You put your... You threw your peace signs up too early. I change it up. You know what I mean? That's what we do here. I'm not Juno, trying. you want to go upstairs? <gasps> Beans! She's too busy doing chomping nails. Yeah, she started chomping her nails. Uh, Juno, let's go. Hey! Juno, do you want to go? For a cookie? Hey! Wow. She's not giving a care about what you got to say. Bye. Hi, Bean. Bye. See you upstairs, Bean. Thanks for joining us. What a goose.